What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my new career mode. This is episode number 18 and yes today we start the episode off with the big one. It's the second Derby della Mola of the season as Juventus take us on here at the Stadio Olimpico de Torino. As you can see seven games to go just two points separate first place Juventus and second place Torino. This is without doubt the biggest game of the season. Whoever wins this has the best possible chance of going on to win the title. If we win we we overtake Juventus by one point. If Juventus win, they open up a five-point gap. If it's a draw, then things stay the same with just six games to go. A massive, massive game, and it was going to be frantic right from the first minute. And the first chance did fall to us as well, but Martinez was denied by Courtois as he tried to, uh, tried to round the Belgian goalkeeper. But Juventus had their first chance in the 28th minute as Lichtsteiner finds Vidal. As Vidal finds Pereira, he plays it backwards towards Paul Pogba. And there are some players that you just can't stop. And when they're feeling it, they're really feeling it. And Paul Pogba seemed to be feeling it right from the first minute. In the 28th minute, he opens the scoring here at the Stadio Olimpico di Torino with an absolute thunderbolt. And it was just one of those goals which you just have absolutely no chance of stopping whatsoever. Because as Pereira plays the ball backwards outside the area, I was wondering what on earth he was doing. But as he found Paul Pogba, I realised he knows that the French midfielder can strike him from range. But on his weaker left foot, with pressure being put on him from uh, Benassi, I think it was, he still manages to rifle it with so much power, so much accuracy to beat the best goalkeeper in the league this season in terms of clean sheets for Delhi into the into the, uh, the back of the net courtesy of the ball canning off the far post there the inside the far post as it goes across the goal line into the other side of the net Paul Pogba makes it Torino nil Juventus one and it's the worst possible start less than half an hour on the clock and already our rivals are one goal up here at the Stadio Olimpico de Torino so worst possible start Torino nil Juventus one but we had a good chance here in the 37th minute as Martinez keeping his place ahead of Quagliarella goes down the right hand side, takes it around Chiellini and crosses, picks out Florenzi on the edge of the area, but his volley goes harmlessly wide of the post and behind for a goal kick. So still Torino nil, Juventus won, but to be honest, not much was really happening until the 55th minute when Carlos Tevez got himself an injury. And after the referee dropped ball, we worked our way forward. Gabbiadini finds Martinez and Martinez runs through, smashes the ball past Courtois and makes it Torino 1, Juventus 1. And after watching that goal back on the replay, I was sitting there thinking to myself, it was a great goal by, uh, ball by Gabbiadini, don't get me wrong, but the Juventus players just seemed to stop. When the referee dropped ball after Tevez's injury, we were in possession beforehand, so we had every right to carry on playing, but the Juventus players just seemed to stop, like they weren't even playing the game, it was ridiculous. We ran through and Martinez makes it 1-1 uh, here, Torino back on double terms, great decision to keep faith with Martinez and keep quietly real on the bench, clearly, as Martinez does equalise for us, but I just, I couldn't believe it, like how easy that was for us just to work our way forward. Great ball uh, by Gabbiadini, yes, but even so, really poor from Juventus, switching off, and it's Torino 1, Juventus 1. That shot from uh, Juventus went wide the post there, and it was still 1-1, and in the 63rd minute here is Martinez finds Poloski. He picks out Benassi, and, well, Paul Pogba scored a great goal in the first half, but this one, in my opinion, is even better. Marco Benassi gets only his second goal of the season, but this one is without the best one. Absolutely superb strike by our young midfielder. The former Inter Milan man just levers it from range. He's about 20 25 yards out and Courtois is one of the best goalkeepers in the world. I say that with utmost certainty but the Belgian is getting absolutely nowhere near that one. He's a big six foot six tall frame but even he can't stretch enough to get onto that ball and tip it wide at the post. It's a brilliant strike by Benassi. The number 94 makes it Torino 2, Juventus 1. We take the lead for the first time in the Derby della Molle with his second goal of the season and what a goal it was. So Torino 2, Juventus 1. We take the lead for the first time in the game. In the 80th minute here, a great chance to make it 3-1 as Muri swings in this uh, cross. It's not fully dealt with and Poloski gets taken down by Paul Pogba and the referee awards a penalty to Torino as well. As you can see when the ball is crossed into the box there, uh, Juventus failed to deal with it. It dropped to Poloski and Paul Pogba, just absolutely no need for it. Tugging on the shirt of Alberto Poloski there, clearly. Poloski hits the deck. He does go down a little bit theatrically, I'll admit, but it's still a penalty. You cannot pull on the shirt like that and expect to get away with it. So, penalty to Torino and a great chance to make it 3-1 with just eight minutes to go. Alberto Poloski is the man who's standing up to take it from 12 yards. Can he make it Torino 3, Juventus 1? Yes, he can. He smashes the ball right into the top corner and in the biggest game of the season, in the possible title, well, title decider, you could say, it's Torino 3, Juventus 1, courtesy of Poloski's 21st goal of the season and what a penalty as well 
goal. When the pressure is on, when you're only leading by one goal against a fantastic Juventus side, to smash that ball right into the top corner, inch perfect penalty, was absolutely superb. Torino 3, Juventus 1, and Poloski from the spot surely seals the game from kickoff as Pereira runs straight into Darmian off the bench. Darmian runs through the middle. Juventus players just absolutely had no idea what they were doing. They capitulated completely. They bring down Darmian with yet another shirt pull and the referee awards us our second penalty in just a couple of seconds and it was Pereira who first gave the ball away, tried to track back, make up for his error and he ends up giving away the second penalty in just a couple of seconds. So great chance for him to spot to make it Torino 4, Juventus 1 with our second penalty won in just a few in-game minutes. It's going to be Poloski against Courtois. Same corner, same result. Alberto Poloski does the salute. It's Torino 4, Juventus 1. He's immaculate from penalties. It's 4-1 to Torino. We're going to win the Derby della Mol and also the significance of this scoreline too means that we are going to have a better head-to-head -head record than Juventus as the league goes first head-to-head -head and then goal difference. So we'll have a better head-to-head -head record because we do hold on to the 4-1 victory absolutely emphatic win and that could, play, uh, could be a crucial factor in uh, the deciding of this title regardless though Juventus walk up the pitch dejected to know they were leading this game going into the break and then to throw it away conceding four goals in the second half was absolutely terrible and those penalties they gave away just shocking as you can see with the stats 10 shots 6 on target for us compared to 5 and 3 for Juventus I felt that like we deserved the win and we got it in emphatic style as well Poloski won minor man the match he got an assist and also got those two goals from the penalties as well and it does mean that we have overtaken our rivals Juventus by a single point with just six games to go and a reminder due to the head-to-head -head ruling Juventus will need to make sure that if they do want to win the title they have to win by at least one point so delighted with that game it could not have gone better like seriously sometimes in my career mode you guys will know I'll big up a game and it won't really live up to the expectations like it'll be a boring nil-nil or one side with a late header in you know the, the 85th minute or something but this game was fantastic it had absolutely everything in it a really awesome game and I'm so pleased we did manage to get the win. We take on Palermo though for the second and final game of today's episode here and as you can see by the team I had to make a lot of changes as well. Due to fitness reasons this game was being played in midweek that Juventus came, uh, game came on the weekend. This was being played in midweek so had to make a lot of changes, had to make a lot of uh, rotations to the side. One of those players coming in was Qualiarella. Martinez scored against Juventus on the weekend but he'll get rested for this game as Qualiarella came back in. Desperate to get himself back in the first team and he had the first chance of the game as well this shot from the free kick going just wide the post and behind for a goal kick and in the 18th minute here a great chance for Palermo to take the lead as Barreto gets on the ball and finds Bellotti he picks out Dybala just inside the area plays it back towards Bellotti who shoots but Padelli makes a smart stop at his near post and Danilo gets the ball away so still Palermo nil, Torino nil. Just past half an hour mark though, another good chance at the home side as Beretti plays a lovely ball through towards Bellotti, but his header goes just wide to post and behind for a goal kick, so still nil-nil. But Palermo were really feeling it in the first half, and he had another great chance here in the 34th minute. Again, it was Bellotti causing me problems here. He picks out his man, he plays it back towards Beretta who strikes, and it's a good save by um, Padelli, and we get the ball away with Lazaro. So still nil-nil in this game, but they were looking really good, Palermo, and you know they were sensing the fact that we were not only tired for the players that were out there, such as Maximovic and Danilo, and Poloski as well, but also the fact we were playing with a weaker squad, having to make so many changes, they were exploiting that, I wasn't really feeling confident with this Torino team and they were the ones that were getting all the chances in this game, but it was still nil-nil, so they just couldn't hit the target, in the 76th minute they had a good chance from this free kick though to open the scoring and make it 1-0, just 13 minutes before the end, really good opportunity here as Vasquez stands over it, he ends up going for goal as well, but what a big defensive play this is by Lazaro, I put him into the team, I gave the young man a chance who came in the January transfer window, and and what a big defensive play that was. He gets on the line for the free kick and deflects it wide of the post. That was creeping inside the post. Fideli wasn't getting there. Big, big clearance. And it's still Palermo nil, Torino nil. And from the corner, it's eventually crossed into the box by Lazar. Into the centre. The number seven swings the ball in. Looks for his man Milanovic, who wins the header. But he can't keep it down. It goes harmlessly over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So still Palermo nil, Torino nil. But for the most part, it was all Palermo in this game. And I knew for a fact if we were going to get out of this game with a point, I would certainly take 
take it. He had another great chance here as Mykonok ends up hitting the post. He scored in the uh, reverse fixture at home. He ends up hitting the, hitting the bar here, so I should say, from that header. And it's still Palermo 0-3-0. Nil, nil. And the final chance fell in the 90th minute. As again, they go down left-hand side. Again, they cross it. And again, Mykonok wins the header. But this time, it goes just over the bar and behind for a goal kick. And it was how the game would finish as well. Palermo 0-3-0-0. Very disappointed to follow up from the Juventus game with a goalless draw. But to be honest, you can see Quadrilla celebrating there. We were very, very lucky to get away with that game of a goalless draw. I played terribly. The team just didn't really respond to what I was trying to do with them. And in the end, as you can see by the stats, a nil-nil draw was the best we could have hoped for. And I'm very pleased we got it. So no real surprise that my man in the match went to Pedelli. But that does end the episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like. And I will see you for the next episode of my new career mode very soon.